This video is focused on talking about uh, introducing you to uh, the convolution integral in continuous time LTI system. Much like we did for the discrete time, it's probably worthwhile to take some time to talk about the fact that we are still talking about LTI system, linear time invariant systems. So that has not changed. So it's a linear time invariant. In this case, we're talking about um, continuous uh, uh, signals and systems. And um, so as we talked before, um, we, what we're trying to do when we have a system, the job of a system is to take an input and shape it into an output. And uh, we, have an, we, we, have, we are able to figure out how a system shapes an input by sending through a uniform signal um, that we to write as an impulse uh, function, uh, such as this, from minus infinity to infinity, delta t minus tau, where delta t, this is minus tau, delta t. So the, if, if, you, if you plot this thing, this, this basically, this signal looks something like this. It's one, and this is t, and um, so it's a, it's a straight line across the whole thing, and the magnitude is one, and um, so it's a very uniform signal. When we run it through, it basically tells us how is how at any given point in time the system is increasing or decreasing the amplitude. In other words, it gives us the shape, shaping function of uh, the system. That shaping function is referred to as h of t, and as we said before, it's called the impulse response. So we, we are basically able to find the impulse response of any linear time invariant system by simply sending a bunch of impulse functions from minus infinity to infinity through it and figure out what the output function is, and that would be our function. <clears throat> so this is, again, the reason we like h of t is once we have the shaping function, we can literally keep that uh, uh, impulse response, which I'm calling the shaping uh, function, but let's let's uh, apply the appropriate name for it, which is impulse response. Then, if we were to put an x of t, and we were able to that to get that shape, which run it through the shaping function, then what comes out of here is y of t, because h of t tells us what the system does to the input. If it's uniform, if it's not uniform, it still will apply to get you whatever y of t you have coming out on the other side. So, so, um, so basically what we are doing is we're taking the input and we are basically multiplying and summing it as it goes across over time from minus infinity to infinity. Uh, as, as we did for discrete time, we also are able to write this function, this activity of taking the input, shaping it with h of t and moving it out to y of t. We can write that as a, that's called a convolution. So it would be x of t convoluted with y of t. And again, this star is not a multiplication, is a convolution. Okay, <clears throat> and then instead of the discrete time was a sum, in this case, it's going to be an integral. The integral is going to go out from minus infinity to infinity. And we have to change the variable of tau because of the integration is going to be with respect to tau. And tau is the variable. T is the constant. So h, I'm sorry, this, uh, I wrote y of t. I should write h of t here because that's what it is. And then h of t is the one that is moving as time increases. h of t moves to the left. Uh, with this equation, the way it's written, uh, the way it's written, t minus ta dt. So this is this this is referred to as an integral sum, and um, it's very useful. And then now, if I once I know the shaping function h of t or impulse response, I can use that by convoluting x of t with it and get the result. Now, you can move h of t or you can move um, x of t 
depending on which is a, which is a simpler function to move, you can choose to do either way because convolution can be written in either way and they're equal to each other. So y of t can also be written as h of t convoluted with x of t. So in other words, these two, this will result in an, uh, um, an integral that is h of tau x of t minus tau d tau. So the, both of these are the same. <coughs> and, and you basically decide which is x of t easier to shift or h of t is easier to shift and you use the appropriate one for what you need to do. So this is very handy for uh, us not having to know what's in the system but rather, rather having the impulse response of the function uh, or the system and then we can find the output from the input. Okay, so so once we have these integrals, these are general integrals, when we have uh, the actual signals and we plug them in there, we have two approach. One approach is called the graphical. So what we'll end up, we'll draw the circuit and graphically or into it. Sometimes it's also called intuitive or graph, <clears throat> graphical. Um, one approach to it. To solve it and find what y of t is. The other way to solve this integral is to use mathematical or analytical mathematical or analytical approach. And um, uh, basically, in this case, we'll draw it and based on the drawing, try to understand which part is gonna we have to integrate which part we have to integrate which part is zero and we don't have to worry about mathematically we strictly rely on mathematics to walk us through to get to the answer without taking advantage of any potential shortcuts or intuitiveness that comes from it. Both of them are equally good. If you're writing a computer program you're forced into using this one because that's what works with computers. If you if a human is doing it Sometimes it's easier to take the graphical approach and, and um, get the result. Now, uh, what we're going to do in future um, videos, we're going to have some examples of continuous time. Uh, maybe one example trying to get the, use the graphical approach on it. The other one using the mathematical approach as an example of how uh, convolution sums are actually solved. Or in this case, convolution integrals are solved.